Hello, in the previous videos, we discussed how to approach a low harm situation by using both the expected value principle and the diversification principle. Up until now, our examples have mostly been financial, insurance, investments, stocks, and so on. But in this video, I would like to talk about how to apply these concepts to more common everyday situations. Remember that with the expected value principle, you look at the expected value of each possible outcome of your decision. The highest expected value is the option you should go with. To do this, we look at the sum of the values times the probabilities of those values, right? Now, this is great when dealing with quantifiable numbers such as in finance. But how do we apply this formula when working with non-financial goals? In those cases, the values would not necessarily be in dollars, but we can assign numerical values based on how we perceive the utility of each option. Thus, everything about the expected value approach stays the same, but now we call it the maximum expected utility principle. Let's look at an example. Suppose you have graduated from college and want to study for one year to earn an extra certificate. If you do this, your career prospects will grow. You estimate that you have an 80% chance of passing the exam needed to get the certificate. This is option one. On the other hand, you have already been offered a job that pays $40,000 a year. It is not the ideal job, but you know that if you take it, you will start gaining experience in that field. This is option two. So you have to ask yourself, which option should you take? The idea here is to quantify the utility of each option. Suppose one year from now, you have passed the exam and have the certificate. Say you assign to this outcome 100 units of utility. Remember that this number is completely arbitrary because we are only using it to compare things. This value represents the knowledge, career advancement, etc. you receive from earning this certificate. Now, what is your expected utility for each option here? When you study for the certificate, you are potentially gaining two benefits. First, the knowledge you have gained by studying for the exam. Second, the certificate itself. Let's assume that you assign equal utility to both, that is, 50 units of utility to each. Now, if you pass the exam, your utility will be 100 units. If you don't pass the exam, your utility will essentially only be the knowledge you have gained by studying for the exam, which is 50 then your expected utility can be computed using the same formula as before. 100 times the probability of passing the exam, which is 0.8, plus 50 times 0.2. This equals 90. Now, let's discuss the utility in option 2. You assign a utility of 50 to the idea of just taking a job, due to the experience you could gain from it. Remember that I chose this number relative to the utility I assigned in option 1. Additionally, you consider the money you will earn with option 2 and assign that an extra 50 units of utility. Both of these things will happen with a probability of 1 if you take the job offer, right? Now, using our formula, this option gives you an expected utility of 100 units. Comparing these two options, it now seems that the second one is the best. Of course, if I change the utility numbers or considered some other factors, it could all be different, but you get the general idea of the expected utility principle. The expected utility method can help us with some problems, but it does not give us all the answers. In the next few videos, we will dig a little deeper into some of the issues with different examples. We will discuss some common issues that arise as well as other methods that can be used when the expected utility cannot be applied appropriately. Thank you for watching.